Hey guys, Nathan here with Mr. Truck. Welcome to which car or truck, in this case truck, should I own? <laughs> We're talking trucks today. We're talking trucks. Did we, do we drag this in with a four-wheeler? No, no we drove it in drove? under its own power. I saw some smoke out there. I wonder what it was. <laughs> yeah, this does, um, until it's warmed up, this truck does tend to leave a little bit of um, odor yeah. behind. Well, this was blue smoke, so I don't think it was, it was over fuel, and I think it was leaking oil somewhere. You're going to scare Roman with oh, all okay. those blue truck. Uh, but, you know, this is those years, what, 87? This, no, this is an 89. This is an 89. This is when yeah. they made the uh, bug shield built into the hood. Nathan, why don't we tell everybody who hasn't tuned into TFL Classics or TFL Truck what we're looking at here? Okay, guys. So what you're looking at is a new, somewhat interesting project pickup that was donated to us by a very good friend who, for free, said, take the truck and I want you to give it away as part of an auction with the proceeds going to an orphanage here in Colorado. Oh, that's a good idea. I thought maybe it, was, it was seventy-five dollars a ton or something. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't know what was going on, but no, and that is cool. It's a good idea and it's fun fixing the old trucks, especially if you got unlimited budget like you guys do. <laughs> that's the thing. Actually, we don't have an unlimited budget. Our budget is twenty-five hundred dollars to fix up the truck. Now, this is the deal. Uh, this vehicle, we did call it Rolling Cool, which you know, was an okay name, but now you guys have asked for a different name and have come up with Gunsmoke. That's a good name. That's a good name. I like, I like that, that name. That. It's almost Maybe the a color. a bit more emphasis on the smoke. Yeah, that's, that's the color. That's a Gunsmoke color, man. It's like that, what do they call that, teal? It's some special name for that color. Well, that and the gun rack inside kind of helps as well. There's a baseball bat in the gun rack. Where's the 30-30? Where's the shotgun? Yeah, Roman didn't want any weapons in here for some strange <laughs> reason with me around. Oh. With us around, I would imagine. Well, this is cool. What in, this, what engines is this? Uh, this has, let me pop the hood. I can get it for you. Yeah, go for it. Get the hood. So it's the International Harvester Engine. For a while, Ford had that partnership, right? Right, right. And with that, what they did was they put in the 7.3 liter diesel. Now, it's a naturally aspirated diesel, so it's not exactly what I would call fast. Yeah, yeah. But there those, she is. Those are the, actually, I think these are one of the rare ones because, you know, the the 7.3 turbos came out in 93, 94, then they went to call them Power Stroke in 95, but this is uh, quite a monster. I mean, these are not super powerful. No. But they got really good fuel mileage. I mean, there's people putting two-speed axles on them and, and different transfer cases and doing everything they could. It was quite the deal, but it, you know, it was better than what else was going on back there because this is, well, it's about the same time the Cummins came out in the Ram. Right. That's after, you know, the GM did that 6.7 and then the 6.2. And then the, whatever was after that, but the 6.5. So, yeah, this was back in the day when diesels were just starting to get in pickup trucks, and we were all excited about it like we were in the half tons until we kind of got bored with that. But now the half tons, I think, are just kind of stagnant. Because everybody's it's... talking electric. Now, that's what you have to do is make it into an electric truck. No, 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 no. 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 We're keeping it diesel. Not only are we going to keep it diesel, but the good news is that it runs actually really well. Um, Holy cow, that's a fuel filter over there. That's right up on top. I like that. <laughs> yeah, you like the easy access? Yes. So International Harvester, I mean, they pretty much build, well, you know, you're familiar with this, farm yeah, yeah. vehicles. Combines, and, you know, farm tractors, right. so dairy this, guys. This yeah. type of power plant was in a lot of those types of vehicles, and it was simple, no nonsense, easy to fix on the range or whatever you guys call it. That's true, and that's the International did. They would make the same size for their trucks as Ford would use. Mm -hmm. They would just have a little different number on them. Yep, that's right. Now, um, I actually, when I grew up um, at a wrecking yard, we had a couple tow trucks that had this power plant, exact same power plant with the four-speed manual transmission. Yeah, yeah. And they weren't fast, but they did their job, and they were reliable as all hell. And that's one of the things about this power plant that I really like is the fact that there are people out there who still have them. Yeah. And have just replaced a couple of components, and they're still working. Yeah, this is way before direct injection. It's pre-combustion chamber, so it had a whole different way of mixing fuel on these puppies but yeah it's it's old school i mean this has got manual hubs it's got all the cool stuff leaf springs front and rear uh -huh. so this is like the easiest truck on the planet to lift oh yeah you just put a block under the leaf and there you go you can just tell you what it looks like it's lifted now i'm not sure if it is uh well but I, it looks lifted we suspect that it has helper springs and the reason why is because the guy who formerly owned it looks like he had a uh, camper in there oh yeah which you can see with these brackets and the bracket inside, that's usually what they'll do. Yeah, sliding camper on an eight-foot bed, that's mm -hmm. good, that's good. And it does have the overload spring on top. Exactly. With the bumpers against the frame, so that's right. like, it was like a camper bed. Look how many leaves there are. There's a hell of a lot of leaves on there, three-inch leaves, and two fuel tanks on the same side. That's something Chevy didn't discover for quite a while. No, no. The <laughs> tanks on both sides. And that's the cool thing about this vehicle is that it still has everything that works. These fuel tanks work, the four-wheel drive system works. 
transmission yeah. works really well. Right. Engine it's a runs. Full floating axle. There were some of these back then that were a light duty heavy duty. Mm -hmm. And this was the heavy duty. The first Super Duty was in 99. They skipped 98. But this is a real heavy duty truck. This, yeah. This is good. You could do you could a lot of weight. And look at that. It's aerodynamic. It's got these special air holes built into it. Yeah. The rust is specifically there so it'll lose weight as you own it. And that's oh, yeah. the cool thing. It actually gets lighter progressively. It's better fuel mods as you own it. That's so good. what we're going to try to do with the truck is obviously we need to replace uh, tires and wheels. It's going to be part of that $2,500 budget. We're going to well, try that's, to. That's most of the. That's, the budget's gone now. Tires and wheels. We you're think done. we can probably get someone to donate at least part of that, okay. or at least give us okay. a break in the cost. And then we're talking about doing a couple other things. It's missing something that I think we really should try to add to it. A tailgate. Yeah, <laughs> namely a tailgate. A tailgate. Yeah. Um, so that that oh. would be really nice to get our hands on another one of these. But as you can see over here, it looks like that the tailgate that was on there um, has seen uh, better days. Yeah, it got bit a little bit. But look yeah. at that bit. That's nice and smooth. It's all rounded. We they did that so you can scoop the corner out of the corners I, when you're feeding <coughs> your pigs. You know, you got to scoop the corner. This came out in '73. This bed. Uh -huh. And look at that front rail, right there. In well, isn't below that? The, the news are, those are always smashed to shoot. And her dented, and that was like perfect. That guy didn't run anything. He Thank made... you for editing yourself, by the way. That yeah. was really good. <laughs> I'm impressed. Like, keep telling me not to cuss on live TV. No, so. no, that's only Roman's allowed to do well, that. Well, look at this. They even ran bolts to the top of the bumper. They mm -hmm. didn't want that bumper dipping down. Look at this. They yep. all reinforced. Yeah. It's got a hitch on the bike. You can go do tug of war with this. Take this against that new truck. Really bad idea right now until we get tires on it at least uh, because it's these things are next to bald. But we might do that later on in time. The good news is, is that for the most part, as you can see, it's pretty solid. I looked underneath the rust. I mean, it's there, but, oh, it's, yeah. mostly, <laughs> but it's mostly on panels. Well, this is galvanized sheet metal, so right. these, these are the better ones. Now, look, too, this is another thing Ford's famous for. And I think Toyota is the bolt goes all the way through the floor, through the subframe, through the frame. Yep. And I always liked that idea. Everybody else just goes up to the subframe. But, you know, when you're doing bed lighter, you got to take all that out, and you know, like we've done on ours. So that's that's good. Boy, man, I miss the old gun racks in the back window. I that's how I went to high school. I always had a shotgun at thirty thirty and a whip or so and you know, some of those other things that the women give you, you know, that you hang on things. Okay, so I had all that in my back rack. All of that that you just listed is extremely illegal to have inside of a school parking oh, it is. lot nowadays. Oh, yeah. no guns. Yeah, it's you know, and, and, and what the hell do you women... do with that little slugger, that Louisville slugger? Is that for picking your teeth? That's a weapon. Well, you know, you can look at it a couple different ways. Where are these things built? Oh, is this? Were these Louisville too? I thought Kansas are, City. They, well, they're, they're be I thought they were built somewhere. in Kentucky anyway. So yeah. we were trying to come up with a tie-in between that and uh, okay, and also put something in the gun rack to make it useful. Yeah, the bed's actually in good shape except for a little rust on the outside. But it's, it's not double, that bad. It's double walled. Yep, you can and that's the thing is not everybody was double walled back yeah, then either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, and then Ford last single wall was uh, halfway up in '72. Mm-hmm. But yeah, look, it's even got a cap protector. I actually really like the fact that he did that because I have a feeling that this area would be rusted to hell if it wasn't. Yeah, that's true. And then that usually gets dinged like crazy. The well, bed, he had a camper that went on yeah, top of Yeah, the this. bed's actually in good shape. It's just the outside little corner, the spaces that the water drains on each corner. And of course, the fender catches a lot of water. Nothing that a plow torch could not take care of. There you go. We can put dough on there. We can put all that. What's that called? That putty you put the on mesh there? and yeah, uh, bondo all, and yeah, all that. Bondo the hell out of this truck. I wonderful. think Tommy would love to have a big old thing of bondo and just play with that stuff. Well, his high it. boy had a lot more rust than this one. Oh, it did. That thing yeah. was that was horribly rusted. This is much better. This is actually a pretty solid truck. So I'm pretty happy about what we're going to be doing with it. And you know, if you guys have some ideas about what we could do, or if you want to even throw in a donation to TFL Truck specifically to fix this thing up. Believe me, we would accept it gladly. In fact, if you do have any ideas or any donation plans, send that to, is it info at tflcar.com? Yeah, or ask at tfltruck.com. Either way, you'll get Ask it. at tfltruck.com. So yeah. if you guys have any suggestions or more importantly, donations, by all means, do that. And we will definitely give you some airplay on those things as well. This is an interesting truck, though, because I remember when these diesels came out, these heavy diesels, uh -huh. on these trucks, they had to start putting like the snowplow package on the front to support the springs. Because uh -huh. they were making them kind of, especially with the twin I-beam or traction beam, oh, back like then. the old Volkswagen, you know, you'd have the tires sticking and doing their little thing. So that's what they did. They reinforced the front with a snowplow package. Like that just came out again for Super Duty. Right. Snow plows. Well, this is before the twin I-beam front suspension. This oh, is this is a mono beam? It's yeah, a I solid think, axle? A solid front axle, Well, that I is believe. cool. Yeah, that's right. It probably was in the... Uh, well, I thought that was in the 80s, early 80s. I think. 
Yep, yeah, that yes, is a solid is. twin axle. And, and you know what? That was only a I think That's the good. twin I beam initially started off on the half ton, if yeah. I recall. Yeah, twin I beam and traction, twin yeah. traction beam. And the, the twin I beam wasn't really a great That's idea. Right. The uh, really uneven tire well, wear. Yes, they were. And you actually had to heat up the the I, the I beam to to, to to pitch the the camber and all that stuff. Right, it was not easy thing to do. And I the ones I remember started about I think I saw some in the 80s, and I know the early 90s had a problem. But yeah, that was quite the deal. So this is got big leaf springs on the front, mm -hmm. which doesn't make it ride well, but that was for the heavy duty part. Yeah. 410 gears front and rear, Dana 60s. Oh yeah, 410s, that's yeah. cool. Beefy, beefy axles. I mean, altogether, I, I really do like this truck. I, I just like how honest and hardcore it is, and at the same time, the potential it has. Well, like you so, were talking about before, this oh, grill, yeah. it's got the place for the uh, canvas. That's right, so for those of you who are unaware of cold weather, one of the things they'll do is they'll have, the, the, the reason this grill has been replaced, my guess, is so it could have these mitts on here, and so you could slap on a piece of material canvas or yeah, like you know vinyl, yeah, yeah. and that way it's much better for cold weather running. You don't have all that cold. Look how big that radiator is. That's the four four core. That one. That's four a big core. Radiator. Yeah, proper copper radiator. So there you go. Any questions we got? There were a couple of people asking, what's the payload on this truck? <sighs> That's a is good there, is there question. A sticker in the there, I think there is. I doubt it has payload, but that would be interesting. There we go. Surprise the payloads on there. They used to like to hide all those numbers in the old days. Well, we got a rear GAWR. Yeah. Rear gear. Well, payload might have been, you know, well, the camper's special. If that's what this was, it I'm going to guess it was around 2,000 pounds. That would have been pretty high. Well, but, but with the extra spring in yeah, here, yeah, it's possible. That mm. seems awfully high, but yeah. Okay. Well, look, look at these. This thing has got. Well, you can't see it from there, but now did you move the uh, blinker back to see if it has tilt wheel? Because you know that's what they did. They tilt wheeled it with the blinker lever. No, I, I haven't had the guts to do anything well, with let's do, the let's blinker. Let's break something. I'll break something on no, camera. Don't, 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 don't. <laughs> okay, if you break it, you <laughs> make sure they know it's you. Because this is how it used to be when you did the tilt wheel, but I don't see the where it's. I sincerely this doubt this doesn't have tilt wheel, but it's probably. It looks like it's an XL, not an XLT. But here, now this is what's cool. This is what I miss on these trucks. The rain gutter up here, man. Instead of all that foam and the rubber they do now. Yeah. And the vent windows, man. I can smoke cigars in these all. Hell yeah. Defrosted your window. Oh, I yeah. I miss these vent windows. These things were great. And what's cool, actually, I talked about you when we did a video with this truck versus the uh, heavy duty, our new one, uh -huh. which was there were three different options. Well, not uh, three different functions of this little window. So this was just your general cool off right here. Right, right. All right, so you cool defrost. off. This one here was perfect for uh, smokers. Oh, yeah. Because you're able to flick and everything else and not have anything come in. And then if you had, Kent, I specifically said you had too many burritos, boom. Oh, wow. Yeah, like that brings in a maximum amount of air. Cap. You hit that sliding rear window, totally great ventilation, but this doesn't yeah. have that. This so. doesn't have that. So oh, this does cool. help. You do it on both sides and no boom. No bed liner. This is really a simple, easy to take care of truck. Yep, yep. It has a CB, which doesn't work. Um, I was going to say, Mark uh, Downing asked, does it have Apple CarPlay or Android Auto? Huh? Very oh, close. Sure it it has. has. But if this massive antenna was any giveaway, it does have a CB. Yep, yeah. which is right up there. Apple Ian, wasn't I don't even born catch back it. there in the, in the late 80s. Uh, well, they, actually, they were. Uh, they were, but they were Apples in the 80s? Yeah, they were there early Macs, I Macintosh? believe, back then. Wow. Um, anyway, so actually the 2C and the 2E. Well, I'm sorry, now I'm thinking Apple. Uh, so it's a Uniden uh, non-functioning CB, oh, wow. or as I like to put it, low wattage. Well, these camper mirrors, these were good trailer mirrors, and the camper mirror had another piece here. It went on and moved this mirror out. Right, and so you could actually swing it outward. Then they had the West Coast mirrors. They had all kinds of mirror options. That was a good-looking one there. Well, look, at it. it's got a saddle stirrup. So you can climb in this tall beast. Only on this side, which my, is great, oh. <laughs> which, which is cool because... My Ram had that, my uh, Dodge Zilla. Yep, that's right. It's only on one side, which is, as I said, awesome because I love it when people who well, want to get into my help truck. Your have girlfriend in there, man. Yeah. Yeah, be a real man. Help her in this side so she can slide over. Oh, the there is nothing I like more than actually having my kids struggle to get into a truck. So oh. I love bringing big trucks home. Oh yeah. So, any more questions, there, Zach? Uh, let's see. Uh, let's get to a couple of our prepared questions here. So these are questions Start that came in earlier uh, before the show. So Chad reached out to us by email and asked, um, this is actually to you, it asked Nathan. Uh, I was looking at a used Tacoma when I came across a 2003 Nissan Frontier with a supercharged engine. 
I never knew they existed, and I wanted to know if they were any good. That is a really good question. You know about these old? Oh, I liked them. I yeah, they were really cool, cool, right? Yeah. Uh, about yeah. 210 horsepower, 200 and I think 46 pound-feet of torque, 3.3 liter. It's the same V6 that's in the regular Frontier that year, but they slapped on the supercharger to give it more power, and it's intercooled as well. Um, great up here at the Rocky Mountains mm -hmm. um, because you get that extra power from the supercharger. But it's not as powerful as the 4-liter V6, which replaced it in the next generation Frontier. Um, I've talked to a few people because I was interested in it. I, about two years ago, I was thinking about buying one because it's a supercharged little pickup truck, right? Oh, yeah. Um, they're really hard to find in certain trims. So in other words, if you want to get a four-wheel drive mm -hmm. uh, with the extra cab or the quad cab or whatever, um, really hard to find with a manual transmission and a supercharged engine. Finding one that has a long bed, really hard to find with, you know yeah, what I mean? Right, all, seven foot bed. And because it was sort of a limited run. Uh, they only built them for a few years, and they built them with two-wheel drive and four-wheel drive. They did build some manuals. Uh, most of them were automatics. They did build a few four-wheel drives. Once again, most of those were automatics, and they built a few long beds. And those ones with the great big headlights? Yeah, the I, the, it's the previous generation, yeah, which I, I happen to think is the best looking of all the Frontiers. Yeah. It's, technically, it's part of the first generation Frontier platform, but they redid the entire front end uh, around 2000, and um, that front end has those those headlights that come out, and they got yeah. a little round things, yeah. and they look a lot more manly. Toyota did that too, didn't they? Put some blowers on earlier pickups? Yeah, they did. They had the TRD set up, uh, but that was dealer installed yeah, but it was, was but it was covered by the warranty. Yeah. These were actually factory installed superchargers. Wow. And so that was one of the major differences. And for a while, the Nissan Frontier with the SC powertrain was considered one of the fastest trucks of its time. Yeah, from, it, just from a marketing standpoint, that sounds really good. Mm -hmm. It should have been a good way to sell trucks. At least have a couple in your dealership get people excited. Well, that was the whole thing. You'd bring yeah. them in looking at that, and that's a really expensive one. Then you'd say, oh, well, we have one without the supercharger sure. <laughs> that you can buy that you can actually afford. Oh. They actually had unique wheels, which was pretty cool. Um, they were good-looking wheels that had a lot of unique badging, obviously, even on the interior. They were really special little trucks. In terms of long-term longevity, I actually hear good things. Some guys are running around with 250,000 miles with the original supercharger, and they've only made minor replacements with, like, radiators and whatnot. That's cool. Yeah. You know, that's... They, they can live a long time, just like the Frontiers now, they, you know, the, the oldest truck out there. Oldest truck out there, although I'm hearing that they finally are going to have a replacement coming soon. Really? Mm-hmm. All right, Zach, what do you got? <laughs> uh, Ron Smith was saying, getting back to this, now I want an older Ford pickup. Well, you can buy this one when they get done with it. What a deal, what a deal. Now you know what you're going to get. And the money is going to be going to charity. Exactly. Yeah, uh, this, this, this is a good plan. This is the one. Get your bid in now. A couple people are asking um, if these headlights are glass or plastic. You can tell by the way they're discoloring. Them. And they're yellow, yes. Yeah, they are plastic. Only <laughs> slightly yellow, and it's a safety feature. <laughs> oh, is it? No, is it's it? Well, it's like your glass. You get those yellow you know, hunting licenses. It makes it, hunting glasses makes it sharper, more clear. These will blind. That's people on the highway coming at you. Oh, I see. see. that's the whole safety feature behind Look at the front bumper is even straight. How do you find a truck with a front bumper that hasn't been I redeemed? suspect that this has been replaced. And oh. speaking of bumper, actually, uh, our good friend Dan Atkinson, who's hey, tuning Dan. into the live stream, says he thinks he has a worn winch bumper for this model of truck. Ooh. Really? Just laying out in your backyard somewhere, Dan, huh? <laughs> that would be really cool. So, Dan, uh, let us know and maybe send a picture or something like that so we can send it off to Roman. Well, and maybe we'll start a conversation. He's coming to Colorado next month. Maybe he can bring it. Drop we, it off. And if you drop it off, and we'll definitely write up something that you can use on your taxes or something. Uh, Mitchell Martin had a really good question. What is the cheapest and most basic, i.e. manual steering, I don't think any truck has that anymore, um, but manual windows, et cetera, that kind of thing, just no bells and whistles, vehicle, or let's keep it the trucks uh, you can buy today, new. Well, that Lost Frontier you guys had is pretty basic. That was the least it expensive had pickup a king truck. cab. And that yeah. Was so that had a four-cylinder. Now, this is this was, uh, at the time of 2018, I think it was, uh, Nissan Frontier. Once again, a Frontier. It was rear drive. It had the four-cylinder engine, and it had, I think, a five-speed manual transmission. And it was roll-up windows. Manual roll-up windows. Had power steering. Everything's going to have power steering if it's a truck nowadays. I don't know of anything that won't. No. Uh, but it was a really basic vehicle, and I believe it came in at just under 19000 
And once everything was said and done, we, I think it was like 21. With yeah. the one. We, we had almost the very base model. I think we had a couple features. Yeah, that was a king cab, so it mm -hmm. had a little bit extra. But yeah, I mean, you subtract that out, you probably could have bought a truck like that with nothing on it for 16 to 17. Uh, maybe. It's, it's really, the, right now, the absolute cheapest MSRP is about in the 18s. Yeah. And that's, that's for that Nissan truck. And that's going to go away soon when they replace it. By golly, you better get your hands on them now. Mm -hmm. If you want to crank up windows, you know, those are getting hard to find. Now, on half-ton trucks, the least expensive one that I'm aware of is the Ford F-150 with the V6, the old V6. Oh, really? That's if you can still find them. Huh. Um, that's their, their absolute base package, which yeah. is still in the low to mid-20s, isn't it? Well, probably. I thought Ram had one of those things. With oh, the, Ram does have the work the truck, 3. too. 3.6, whatever that is. Yeah, they're the base. The, yeah, they Oh, Joey's sorry, cleaning sorry. lady is saying, um, I got a Hemi Ram Classic regular cab for 19 k plus taxes, licensing fees, that kind of thing. That's impressive. What but year is that? Is it uh, say? Ram Classic, so it's... Like oh, it's it would have been, been a couple, couple series classic. back. Yeah, they're still selling those classics. Yeah, they too, are, right? and that's, that's part yeah. of... The, and they're mixing them with their sales numbers, yeah. and it's helping. The thing about that is that it, we, we only know what we can quote off of websites and, and what, you know, the MSRP mm -hmm. is, but... The good news is, in many cases, you can go to a dealership and you can fight and get them way down on cost. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's lots of rebates, a lot of incentives. And, you know, they get paid more they sell, they get paid more. So it, it's, you always want to work those deals. Work them, work them, work them. Talk about hold back. Get Don't them all excited. Don't get up and walk away and make them call you back and beg for your forgiveness. Trust me, it works. Yeah, get that poker face on there, go in there and growl at them. Get them Say worried. something about their mothers. Too. Yes, yes. There's another comment that just came across saying, Nathan, you should keep this truck for you. Because I'm sure uh, she who must be obeyed will love that in the driveway next to the Samurai. So well, again, I, yeah, I got this. So try to fix that while your space maker went off. Oh, uh, why? It does that. My heart's fine. <laughs> so I have a Suzuki Samurai, an 87 that I've been working on. It used to be the one that TFL owned, and I bought it from Roman. You bought that? Yeah, I love it dearly. It's wow. freaking fantastic. It's even more basic than this truck. Yeah. That's it's even more basic. Got the Actually, canvas older. top and all that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Kind of. I bet it goes up on two wheels once in a while. Does no, it, it doesn't. Does that that, that Consumer Reports thing was <laughs> hogwash. It's ridiculous. So I'm using terms <laughs> like you're used to. I'm a city boy, so the hogwash should be like... You know, uh, okay, like yeah. one of those BS words. Yeah, you like that, right? I figured you'd buy this if it said Toyota. I like Toyotas too, I admit it. I like, I, I like big trucks. I, I had um, a 76 Chevy um, truck. I've had uh, two or three Ford trucks in my time. Yeah. But they all came from my family's wrecking yard and through my dad with the military and all that stuff. Different so colored parts on them. Oh, a lot of different colored parts, yeah, <laughs> to say the least. Um, so <laughs> this, yes, I would love to drive it. And she who must be obeyed, my wife, would see this and come out and remove what's left of my leg and use it to beat over my head. You let your wife tell you what to do? Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah, come on. <laughs> Are you kidding me? You haven't. Oh. Yeah, you must be the only guy I know that, that does I that. I fully so. admit to it. That's the difference. <laughs> I just admit to my failure. Oh, yes, happy wife, happy home. I yes, know yes. Yeah, and, and trust me, keeping her happy with that Suzuki, she's just like always kind of looking at it sideways. Clint Eastwood style. And she drove it? Has she been in it? She's been in it, and she was wondering why we were, you know, boing, 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 and I'm laughing. Changing, yeah, changing lanes by bouncing. Yeah, right? and she's sitting there going, this is fun. <laughs> yeah, I said, yeah, you should really try it off-road. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she doesn't do that. Road. But uh, I'm, I'm oh. teaching my kid how to drive on it. Oh, that's a good one to start with, something small, easy to handle. That's, yeah, yeah. Take them out in dirt roads way from the country. And... Well, I was just parking lots, actually, that oh. are heavily crowded. Uh, that's you like that. Well, it forces her to figure out what the hell to do, right? So, I'm sorry, let's continue. Yeah, um, there were a couple of comments asking if we're going to do any performance mods to this. Specifically, uh, people are mentioning turbo kits for this old diesel. Oh, I over fuel it. You got to do it. Turn that pump up. Let's get crazy with it. I want to um, see some black smoke coming out, not blue smoke. I, yeah. I don't think at the moment that's within our budget. Yeah, 2,500 won't buy 25 more than tires and wheels. We're going to be lucky to get <laughs> tires and wheels on here and maybe do a little bit of rattle can work. Yeah. The thing is, is that. Um, it runs really good right now. Um, we might, I think we're going to do a slight engine tune. Yeah. Just to get it to run a little tiny bit better. That we can do with within a reasonable amount of money. Diesel mechanics are not cheap at no, all. No. At all. Well, 
especially working on something like this. Is well, kind of you got to find the real old mechanic to come work on this. Oh, uh, we got plenty of now. Them. Is this got glow plugs? Is that what you had yeah. to do? Turn the yeah. switch on, the light comes on. There's Five a, minutes yeah, later, can, it starts. We can demonstrate that before yeah. he comes out the show, but there's yeah. a buzzer and a light in the truck that says wait to start. Yeah, yeah. that's the glow yeah. plug yeah. telling yeah. you right. Yeah. Um, so, in terms of performance, we might tune it a little bit. If anything, I mean, you know, the exhaust seems to be doing okay, just a little rusty. I think that we're going to pretty much leave it as is. It runs pretty yeah. damn good. Yeah, and if you're going to resell this in the charity and get somebody else in it, I would concentrate on the steering and it's tightening everything up so it's safe. It does need some new bushings and some yeah, stuff like I'm, that. Yeah, I'm sure some universal things. Yeah, some, uh, you know, all the stuff. It doesn't have kingpins. It's got the uh, steering rod bushings and all that stuff needs replaced right. probably. Wait, and, to, and that could have at least use a, a mechanic to look at it and see whether or not yeah. the pins need to be replaced or anything else. Yeah, just make it stuff safe because like other people will modify it if they want to, but yeah. It's actually going to a mechanic, I think, either today or tomorrow, and they're going to be looking over a few things as well. But is he an old mechanic? Or? Uh, well, I think he's your age. Oh, he's old. Yeah, he's old. <laughs> <laughs> Get him tinkering I didn't want to say anything else. <laughs> I think I just throw it out there that way. Uh, yeah, my hair's gray. I'm, I qualify. I'm, if I'm I had old. hair, it would be gray. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Zach, you got anything else? Yeah, I have one question from Scott via email. Um, saying he's having a dilemma regarding which engine to choose for his 2020 Chevy Silverado 1500. Um, he pulls a 7,000 pound enclosed race car trailer through the mountains. He can't decide uh, between the new 3 liter Duramax diesel or the 5.3 liter V8. He does not want to go with the 6.2 because it requires premium fuel and he mm. lives in California. And it's got a 10 speed and it's got power. It's got. Cajonas. And fuel, I love the 6.2. And premium fuel is almost five bucks a gallon. Yeah, yeah but it gets pretty good fuel mileage for the premium even. It's actually, well, yeah. I mean, the 5.2 is going to save a lot of money. I had high hopes for that 3 liter. I think it gets very fuel mileage. My guess is the best. 20, what, 33 miles a gallon on the highway on a two-wheel drive. And it's got a 10 speed. The exhaust brake, it does not quite work. Like, I hope it's the only exhaust brake in the half ton market. So that's a big deal. But we, me and Andre and I did the I Gauntlet, and the Ram with the Eco Diesel and the 8 speed actually did better going downhill braking. How much with did it. you tow with that one up the Ike? I thought it was like 7,000 pounds. So what, what he's towing? Yeah. Yeah. And so he, he says he really wants to make the best engine choice for towing. He currently uses a 1995 F 250 Super Cab with the 460 gas V8. So it has decent torque, but he only gets about six mpg. Oh, he's time. doing good. Well, what what uh, does he tow a lot? Because seven thousand. Well, he said seven thousand. Oh, exactly. Oh, but a lot. I mean, often, often. Uh, I mean. He didn't mention the frequency, but I imagine he tows. It's a race because you, yeah, so he yeah. And see, guessing. the three liter costs the same as that six two that I love. So to me, I think that's I would go with this, the three liter diesel just because of the fuel mileage, yeah. and it will meet his ratings that he needs. I think. I just wish it exhaust brake it needs recalibrated so the RPMs jump up in tow haul mode, which I think they'll do because it's the same 10 speed the Ford does, and in certain EcoBoost they do crank up the horse the the, the RPMs, which helps exhaust brakes. It helps grade shifting, and I think sometimes Chevy will come out and fix that. So I, I, that's my choice is the the Duramax. I would agree that that new Duramax is impressive. <laughs> do not get the four cylinder turbo that they have available. It's not powerful enough to tow what you want to tow. Not fast anyway, yeah. They're, yeah I mean, they're, a lot they're, of people they're base in the comments engine. are also saying go with the Duramax. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 it would be the way to go. And, you know, the thing about it is it developed the hell out of that engine. I mean, they really did spend a lot of time. You could look at FCA, and, you know, they've had that engine around for a while, and it's been mm. updated. But this is an all-new engine. Oh, yeah, and now it's available in the Suburban and Tahoe, all the stuff for, you know, the next bottle year. And it's... Well, it's, it's going to be big. Yeah, well, it it's is. It's going to help their EPA numbers and their cafe yeah. numbers and all that stuff. That's one of the points of it. And right now, diesel isn't that expensive, at least. No, uh, it has reversed. You know, I've been waiting and waiting for that. So, yeah, I mean, diesel, you can get a really good deal on it. And, if you know, if you drive a lot to work, that's a big, important thing. At 30, in a two-wheel drive, 33 miles a gallon, it's 29 in a four-wheel drive, which is still very, very good for all what compared to the rest of them. But, yeah, I'm a big fan of that. Uh, and he's in California, too. so he's going to be at lower elevation, a little bit less strain on it. Not that it'll matter that much, but nonetheless, let us know what you decide to do. But I, I agree with Kent on this for sure. The Duramax is the way to go. Yeah, and tell us what the spread is in California between gas and diesel. You know, here now, diesels drop below gas like it used to be in the good well, old days. I'm pretty sure it's the same in California. You think it's dropped oh, below right, that? Super unleaded in California is ridiculously expensive. Diesel in California was about a quarter more than it is here. Oh, yeah. That yeah. last time I was in California, which was two, three weeks ago. So one last question from Raj via email. 
Uh, he says, I currently have a 2015 Toyota Highlander, and he's in the market for a used truck under $10,000. Uh, he said he's not particularly interested in bells and whistles. He's going to drive about 15,000 miles a year with 50-50 uh, city and highway driving. He is looking at a Tundra, but he's worried about MPG, and he's never towed anything before and likely won't in the future. And specifically is asking, did the Tundra or the Titan ever come in a V6? Uh, the Titan didn't. Any recommendations would be highly appreciated. Well, the, the Highlander, is that even available in the U.S.? The Highlander? Yeah, it is. Is it? Well, which one's not available? The Hilux? Hilux you're thinking, you're thinking okay, the Hilux. Hilux. Okay. The Highlander is the best-selling vehicle in its class in the United States next to the really? uh, Honda Pilot. Yeah. Wow. But we'll, we'll talk about that some other time. Now, the thing is, um, actually, yes, the first generation of the Toyota Tundra, which replaced the Toyota T100, right. did have a V6 available. Yeah, that's, that was that was a small Tundra. Second yeah, generation did as well. They had a four liter. They had the four liter. Yeah, in the earlier ones. Yeah, they had the small Tundra, and then they went to a bigger Tundra. So the smaller Tundra did. I happen to like that truck a lot. I think it's yeah. just it's a good little truck, and it's great. It just sits right in between the big, massive half tons that are currently out there, and you know, smaller, mid-sized trucks. So it's a really cool choice, and I know people who just will replace the engine and drive them for another 150,000 miles, no problem. Those yeah. might be hard to find, though, aren't they? They're, they're, that you gotta series, look. yeah, yeah. I, I think and, I don't see them anymore. You could get a manual transmission with them as well. Manual with, with only with the V6. Okay. Because I'm a man. I like automatic, man. I, if I want to shift, I can push the button. I can do manual shift with my, my automatic. If bothering me as much as yours bothers you. <laughs> I know. I, I got arthritis in it. my thumbs. I can't. Like, the way you use the thumb, use the whole hand. Baseball hole, style. Hole, boom, hole. boom, 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 boom. <laughs> man. <laughs> uh, Line Runner was saying in the comments that the 4.7 liter V8 in the Tundra is a good option. Yeah, it's, actually, it's a great engine. We actually covered one that went over a million miles. Yeah, so, we did. Famously. And and recently there was the the, the larger 5.7 uh, that went over a million miles as well. The 4.7 is a proven entity. It's in a lot of Toyota products. Um, really solid engine. The thing is, is that uh, the Tundra doesn't get great mileage. And so no, if you want a no. good gas mileage vehicle, that's why I was suggesting the V6 yeah. is slightly better. Yeah. But um, that's wrong with the 5.7, the, the big engine. It's just it's a 430 swells. rear end. There's like a Ford F450. It's got a terrible rear end and a terrible fuel mileage, and they squat so bad. So I, I know Andre well, I loves them. Much. He always recommends the, the Tundra. Well, but, it's, they're reliable, they're strong. I yeah, mean, I'll, well, I'll always say that. They're yes, strong. In, in the old days, I would say Toyota was the longest lasting truck, but now I think everybody's catching up to them. I really do. I think so many of the newer trucks. So, what's a good, efficient truck that he can buy? that has, you know, it's a full-size truck that he's mm -hmm. looking for mm -hmm. that gets really, really good mileage. And what kind of uh, what kind of trailer was he pulling? He's not pulling a trailer. Well, then let's go with the 270 EcoBoost, the 150. That thing is a rape tape. I mean, that is a very fast truck. He's also looking for under 10 grand, though, and those oh. haven't gotten Oh, okay, back never yet. mind. Yeah, you got to go to an older truck. 10 grand doesn't buy you much from way back. How about back a Silverado there. with, you know, the, the smaller V8, not the big the one. The 5.3? Yeah. I mean, fairly yeah, if you're not towing a trader, see, those things kind of heated with a trader, but without a trader, they're yeah. fast. That's a little and they, 327 is what it is. Yeah, it's exactly. And they're also pretty damn efficient, if I recall. Yeah, they I, got I, pretty good mileage. Right. You know, the old, just like the old 4.3 V6, mm -hmm. I loved that engine. That thing oh, had Vortec. great, yes. That was the Vortec. Yeah, great fuel mileage. That 4.3, I was one of my favorite you could the get V6s. Those on a full size truck, too. But you get in the manual, too. Yes, I know. <laughs> one of my best friends had one. Yeah, so, I like that combination. Guys, you know, I, we, we, if you give us more specifics, we could probably narrow it down a little bit but mm -hmm. you know it, perhaps a chevy is something to look at or or you know once again the older uh tundras are something to think about right well. yeah that's that definitely is a little older truck and that's hard to, it's hard to figure out ten thousand dollar truck when now something like that in a new one would be you know 45 to fifty five thousand. right exactly so yeah all right zach are we about done bud yeah mark downing says uh, back in the old days you guys did a mid-sized truck comparison video out on the trail i'd love to see a current mid-sized truck shoot out on the trail We'll oh. definitely try to get You were in that. Yeah, we had five trucks in that, I think. Yeah, we, The Honda didn't make it all the way up. It overheated. <laughs> Roman was not nice to that <laughs> truck. Wow, he beat it up. <laughs> so what we would love to do, because there's been some big changes, we have a new Nissan Frontier that we're expecting out pretty soon, 
And now we have the Jeep uh, Gladiator, which is all new. We have a new Ford Ranger. That None of mm -hmm. those were available for that test. So right. you're absolutely right. We want to do it. And if everything works out, if the stars align and the new trucks come out when they're supposed to, we may be able to do something like that not too far in the future, yeah. perhaps in Moab. That's a good idea. We need to do we that. we got to get you out to Moab. Yeah. That's what we got to do. you yeah. got to go out there. I, I can friend. sleep in the back seat. Moab's... Was you it, sleep in the backseat. Eight seat. hours? You in a hotel. <laughs> got, they, they got a little, I mean, driving there. I want to sleep on the way there. We have a donation, guys. Oh, Holy yeah. cow. Ding, ding, ding. Where's my chicken? Thank you. We'll for just the... have you do it. No, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, Bigfoot Ave, who just donated $10, Thank asks, you. are you doing MPG and towing tests on this old 7.3 here? We're going to do a few tests with it, but we need to wait until we make it a little bit safer for the road. So after it goes in for its service and perhaps after we replace the tires, which are nearly bald, yeah, we're going to do a couple things like that because we're curious to see what that yeah, that can produce. That would be interesting to see fuel mileage on that that old of a truck the back in the diesel days. That would be nice. Yeah, what do you, let us know below what like you guys that. think about that as well. If you want us to really test this truck and do a, an MPG loop and stuff like that, like we currently do. I think it would be interesting, but Roman needs convincing. And the only way yeah. that you'll convince him is by putting your comments below. And, you know, I think a great thing to do with this truck is take it to Hooters and see how many waitresses we can get in that size of a cab. I think that would be a good contest. I am so glad my wife doesn't watch this video. I, I just am so happy that she doesn't watch it. You don't take market. her to Hooters and get those great hot dogs. That's, that's great exactly hot dogs. what I do. Yeah, that's, that's, okay. that's what a gentleman does. Okay, guys, thank you so much for joining us. I think, Zach, we're going to wrap it up for today. Do we want to try firing it up, Kent? Oh, yeah. Oh, that's... starting it. Oh, cool. Yeah, I'm going to open you hop that in the... door all the way here. Okay, let's, way. let's so, try to do some smoke. We're going to... We're gonna kill some sparrows now. That's what'll happen. We killed all the sp all the uh, what are those things? Mosquitoes. I've got one cigar with me. <laughs> oh, that's what she said. Okay. What? Do you want to film the light coming on? It's somewhere in the dash. Oh, it says wait to start. It means the light's coming on right there. Okay. Oh, that clutch is tight. Oh, my gosh. This might not be a hydraulic clutch. Does this have a hydraulic clutch, Nathan? It feels like a manual. Okay, here we go. Look at that. Wait to start. And it also tells you there's water in the fuel. It's a great big old fuel filter. Wow, AM and FM radio. This is up to speed. Okay, it should fire up now. Holy moly! Hear the thunder! Hear the smoke and thunder! Not much smoke at all! <laughs> all right, all right, Kelly. That's just a little bit of a miss there. <laughs> What? It's not bad. Is that a valve stem mess? What is that? Yeah, uh, a little sticky valve. That's all. It's not a problem. Yeah. Holy cow, the bright switch is on the floor. Look at that. <laughs> Surprised the starter switch isn't on the floor, too, but no. That kind of dates uh, the Mr. Pen right there. And look at the dash. The dash is nice and not cracked. It's a custom. Yeah, it's a custom head air conditioning. Oh, man. I like the steel overheads. Put my hat rack up there. Whoa, and a manual shifter. I love all the manual stuff. This thing could last forever. What's all it showing? Right, Kent, let's wrap it up. 58,000 miles? Is that 158 or what is that? Right, Kent, say goodbye to the folks. Goodbye, this is Kent. And Nathan. With MrTruck.com, live from Boulder, Colorado. <laughs> See you guys next time. My eyes are burning. Your eyes are, your eyes are burning. I was back here. <laughs> oh, look, the rest is.